Good day, folks. Now we're going to talk about the strength of an asset and also the strength of a base. Now let's look at the asset. The strength of an asset, when we refer to the strength of an asset, we are referring on how weak on how strong the asset. In other words, we are looking, we will look at the extent in which the asset ionizes in water, as well as the base. The base, we are looking at the weak base and the strong base, which is an extent in which the base dissociate in water. Now, let's look at a strong asset. Um, a strong asset ionizes completely in water. What do we mean about that? It ionizes completely in water. Now, we mean that the acid, it dissolves completely in water. That means it forms the high concentration of what? Of H plus when it dissolves in water. There will be more of H plus or more of proton of this or the more of hydronium ion when it dissolves in water. That means it ionizes completely. It forms more ions. But when we referring to more ions of what? Of H plus, um, concentration of H plus when it ionizes completely. Now, all the strong acids, they ionize completely. And when we look at the, the weak acids, the weak acids, they partially or incompletely ionize. That means the, the concentration of, of H plus that is formed is less um, than the strong acid. Now, let's look at the characteristics of strong acid. The concentration of H plus is going to be high, as I mentioned. The pH of a strong acid is going to range between 1 to 2. Now, between 1 to 2 is a strong acid. Now, when it comes to conductivity in a strong acid, the conductivity, when an acid is a strong acid, that means ionizes completely. It forms more ions um, of H+, plus, and it's a good conductor of electricity. It conducts electricity. Remember, um, a substance that conducts electricity, we call it it's an electrolyte. So um, the strong acid, it becomes the good electrolyte due to the production of high concentration of free ions. There's a high concentration of free ions. For example, in the ionization of HCl, there will be more of Cl minus and H plus there that forms the, um, that, 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 that makes a good electrolyte there. Right. When it comes to a rate of reaction, um, the, 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 the strong acid have the high rate of reaction. It reacts faster um, compared to the weak acids. Um, when you react with, with, with any substance, it reacts faster. For example, if you react um, a zinc with an HCl, um, that reaction it's going to be have the high rate because the reason for that is there's a high rate of what of h plus concentration once there's a high um, concentration of h plus which is the hydronium ion in other words that means the rate will be higher and these are the strong acids the first one is hcl is the strongest and the second one it will be the hydrogen sulfate which is the sulfuric acid and the nitric acid so from from hcl to nitric acid there is a decrease in strength let's look at the weak acid the, for example, we have the what the carbonic acid. When we dissolve the carbonic acid, um, the carbonic acid here, um, um, it's reversible. Weak acids are reversible, and the strong acid they are only forward. Um, they are only forward. They are not reversible. That's important as well. So the weak acids are reversible. They have a low concentration, as we mentioned before, low concentration of what of 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 of, of um, H plus, and the pH is high but lower than seven. Their pH. It's above 2, it's above 2, it's greater than 2, and lesser than 7. So it's between, it's between um, 2 and 7. Now, um, a weak acid is a weak electrolyte. That means it, it's not a good conductor of electricity, that solution of, of an acid, of a weak acid, because it produces low concentration of free ions. These ions, they, there's a low concentration of that. Now, when it comes to rate, as I've mentioned, there's a low rate, um, um, low rate of reaction when you react an acid with any substance. The, the reaction there, it's going to be low because of low concentration of H+. These are the acids, the list of acids um, that have a weak. If it's not one of these, any acids um, here, they are the weak acids. The carbonic acid, the acetic acid or ethanoic, and phosphoric acid and oxalic acid. Those are the weak acids. Now, let's move to the base. Now let's look at the strong base. As we mentioned, that the that the base dissociate. Now the strong base dissociate completely. That means remember the base it forms OH minus, which is the the hydroxyl ion. So when you dissociate a base in water, it will form these ions, right? Which is the Na plus and OH minus. Now check my other video 
um, to for more details of dissociation and ionization. So a strong base, it has a high concentration of OH- and a strong base, it has a pH that ranges from 11 to 14. These are the strong base. If you look at, these are the group 1 metals here. The group 1 metals there, um, from the top to the bottom, with an OH, OH, OH there, there's an increase in what? Um, now, there's a decrease in strength, which is the top one, which is the sodium. It has a stronger, um, stronger alkalinity, alkalinity um, compared with other. So it's a stronger base. It's a sodium hydroxide, um, potassium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide. Now, let's look at the weak base. The weak base dissociate incompletely. And remember, the weak base, um, the weak base, they will have the low concentration of OH minus um, their pH. It's going to be lower than 7. It's going to be it's going to be higher than seven, right? Um, it's going to be higher than seven. Um, now let's look at the 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 weak bases. It's an ammonia. It's calcium carbonate. It's potassium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, um, calcium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. Let's look at when we ionize a strong acid in water. What is happening? Let's take a strong acid like HCl. When we ionize HCl in water. What's going to happen there? Sorry about that. War in water. Um, what's going to happen? Um, this is an acid. And water, it's an other product, will behave as a base. And what is going to happen there? This acid will donate a proton in this base. So what's going to happen there? Um, there will be a hydronium ion with the Cl minus. That will be formed. Now, um, there is what we call as an acid ionization constant. It's, it comes or, or it derives from the equilibrium constant. So when we write that, um, we say Ka, it's an acid ionization constant. We write the concentration of products divided by the concentration of what? Of reactants. Right? So Ka is going to be the product. It's going to be the concentration of oxonium ion multiplied by the concentration of chloride ion divided by the concentration of what? Of Cl minus. Why are we not involving water? The concentration of water, of water, it's what? Is equal to one mole per dm3. So there's no need to involve it there. Now, this simply means that um, the Ka um, is directly proportional to the concentration of oxonium ion multiplied by the concentration of what? Of Cr. That means the concentration of, 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 of oxonium ion multiplied by the concentration of Cl minus, it's, it's, it's greater, their concentration. That makes the Ka, um, the ionization constant of an acid, to be greater since it's, a, since it's a stronger acid. So therefore, we conclude that in a stronger acid, the Acid ionization constant, it must be greater than 1 if it's a strong acid. Now, all the time, if it's a strong acid, it must be greater than 1. Let's look at the weak base, at the weak acid. When we refer to a weak acid, let's take the, the carbonic acid. When we dissolve a carbonic acid in water, um, this is what is happening. It's a reversible reaction in a weak acid. So this acid will donate the two protons in water. So there will be... Two hydronium ion um, will be formed there, and we'll have CO3 two minus that will be there. Now, since this is a weak acid, so when we when we write an acid ionization constant there, we will say the concentration of what of product um, multiplied by the concentration of um, of, of carbonate ion divided by the concentration of the reactant which is the carbonic acid there so we'll have two there so um, this simply means that the concentration of these is what is weak or is what is less that makes the Ka value this Ka value to be what to be less as well so if the Ka value is less there that means the Ka value is less than one and that means the concentration of the carbonic acid is what is greater uh, because they're inversely proportional of these two so a weak acid is very important a weak acid is very important that the um the acid ionization constant value is less than one for a weak acid
Let's look at when we dissociate a strong base in water. Strong base is sodium hydroxide. We dissociate it in water. Um, so what's going to happen? This is going to dissociate into ions. There will be a sodium ion plus an OH minus. Remember, a base is a substance. When you dissolve it in water, it forms an OH there. So now, what are we going to do now? This is a strong base. This is a strong base. Now, in this strong base, um, remember, in a strong base, the, the base dissociation constant, which is going to be Kb, is greater than 1 as well. Now, let's write um, an expression for that. It's going to be the concentration of Na plus multiplied by the concentration of OH minus divided by the concentration of sodium hydroxide. So, this means that um, it's a strong base, the Ka, the Kb value, the base ion uh, dissociation constant is greater than 1. That means that this Kb value is greater. That means the concentration of this product is greater. And also, this means the concentration of this is lesser. Remember, the Kb is inversely proportional to the concentration of what? Of sodium hydroxide. Right? Now, um, the Kb value, guys, the base dissociation constant for a strong acid is greater than 1. Remember that. It's very important. Let's take a weak um, base. Let's take a weak base. Let's say calcium, um, um, calcium, let's take calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate, when you dissolve it in water, what is going to happen there? Let's put it like this. Let's put it like this. When you dissolve it in water... So what is happening here? Um, remember, since it's a it's a weak base, um, this is a weak base. So when you dissolve in water, it's going to form ions. There will be a Ca, um, Ca um, two plus plus CO three um, two minus. The, that will be formed there. Remember, for a weak base, the base dissociation constant is less than 1. So the expression, when you write the expression for that, is going to be the concentration of calcium ion multiplied by um, the concentration of carbonate ion divided by the concentration of calcium carbonate there. Right? So the Kb value is what? Is less because the concentration of these two is what? Is less. But the concentration of this is greater. That makes the concentration of the Kb value to be less because they are inversely proportional. I hope you get that, guys.